Right behind me, I have two BenQ hardware calibrated display. These two display are from two different line of pro displays that BenQ have, and they are designed for different type of creative professionals. The first one that I have here, this is the SW2700PT. This is their most popular hardware calibrated display. It is designed for creative photography workflow. And the other display that I have here, this is the PV Pro Video 270. This is a display that is designed for pro video workflow. And in this video, what I'm gonna do is compare these two displays together, talk about the specs, talk about some of the advantages that one may have over the other to give you a better understanding of these two models. I'm Mark Suwan Sang, BenQ Ambassador. Let's get started. Before we start, please subscribe if you are new and hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload cool new videos like this. So some background on BenQ hardware calibrated display, which will lead us right into this comparison. And that is BenQ started to venture into the pro hardware calibrated display market around year 2014 to 2015. They started out with their BenQ PG line. The PG line is no longer in production right now, but that is one of the displays that is the starter for BenQ in terms of hardware calibrated display. And that display is really designed for press printed workflow. That means like really stringent color requirements and so forth. But BenQ have also took what they've learned from the PG line and applied to these two lines that I have behind me here. So they have also applied that to the SW line and the SW2700PT here, this is the very first hardware calibrated display in the photography line that BenQ have released. And I will also add that this is probably one of the first valued hardware calibrated display out there where the price point per performance comparison is, you know, amazing. And I recommend all my friends get this display. Like I said before in my other videos, I purchased a few of these displays to use in my own studio too. So this is a great panel. And the other one here, this is the PV270. This one comes about a year after the SW2700PT. And this was part of BenQ PV line or Pro Video line, which for the most part, at this point of time in the United States anyway, has been discontinued. You may be able to get some refurbished ones, it depends. But if you're out there in the world somewhere, depending on the country and territory you're in, you may still be able to get the PV line display today, which makes this video still relevant. Now that we have the background out of the way, let's talk about the hardware of this display where it matters most. Both of these displays are 27 inch 2K display. The resolution of it is 2560 by 1440 for those of you who are keeping track. The display itself, the panel is classified as a 10-bit panel, and that 10-bit is actually done via an 8-bit plus FRC. So in this case, what's happening is that majority of the color information is carried over the 8-bit channel, where the extra 2-bit information to get it to 10-bit is done via frame rate control, or FRC in this case. So what's happening on the display is that some of the pixels are changing color somewhat rapidly in order for you to believe that you are seeing a visual 10-bit picture. A few things to note too is that many manufacturers may list their display as a 10-bit panel. However, majority of them are implementing 10-bit Vine FRC very similar to what BenQ is doing here in this case. Another thing to think about too is that when you're really looking at the comparison between an 8-bit plus FRC versus 10-bit is you have to think about the price point versus performance and also value of the whole display in general. So the price point itself, if you're going for a true 10-bit display, take any of these displays behind me and the price point that you have right now, multiply that by two or three in order for you to get a true 10-bit panel because it costs that much more. Another thing to consider too is that the value of the display. When you really have to pay that much more, unless your workflow really warrants that you need a true 10-bit display, you're really not gonna gain much by going to a true 10-bit versus using an 8-bit plus FRC. The other thing to note too is that the color information of what you're seeing visually is very equivalent to a true 10-bit panel. Something to note too between these two display and majority of BenQ displays is that they also have a technology called eye care. Those eye care technology when implemented with FRC is gonna help reduce flicker and also eye strains. Many of the customers that I've talked to that use BenQ displays have found out that even with an 8-bit plus FRC, they don't have the eye strain like when they use other panels that are out there. So that's just something to consider. Both of these displays are capable of hardware calibration and they come built in with a 14-bit 3D lookup table. 
The way how BenQ have implemented this 14-bit 3D lookup table is a little bit different on these two displays, where the SW line, the 3D lookup table on this display is actually locked to Palette Master Element only. That is a software that BenQ have developed specifically to calibrate the lookup table on this display. On the PV line, the software that you would use to calibrate this that BenQ provide is just called Palette Master. So something to note there is that there is Palette Master Element and Palette Master, but we're going to talk about that later. But another thing to note about the PV line display is that the 14-bit 3D lookup table that's built into this display is open to third-party software. So for instance, you can use Calman calibration and do a hardware calibration using a third-party software on the PV line display. This is something that's echo in the current generation of SW display with the SW321C. So that's just something to think about there. Another thing about these two displays is the delta E value. The delta E value describes or calculate the variation between accurate colors to what the color the display can actually show. In this case, anytime you have a display with a delta E value of less than two, you have a fantastic display. And across BenQ entire SW lineup, BenQ have guaranteed that the SW delta E value is always going to be less than two, and this one is included in there. However, something interesting about the PV line when I really look into it is that BenQ have guaranteed a PV line delta E to be less than 1.5. So we're talking about a really good panel to a much more stringent panel in terms of color accuracy in this case. So that's just something to think about when comparing these two panels together. The contrast ratio for both of these panels are 1001. Something to keep in mind though is that when you run a custom calibration on your display, you're not going to get a contrast ratio of 1001. That's because when you calibrate the display, you're really dimming down the brightness. So the calculation and everything changes the contrast value. So on a custom hardware calibrated display or on a custom calibration rather, you're going to get a lower contrast value than the factory specification. That's perfectly normal. Another thing to note here is that both of these display max brightness is at 250 nits and both of these panels are IPS backlight panel. That means they have an amazing angle view at 178 degrees on both sides. So what that means is that if you are ever in an environment where you are creating in a group or in a team environment, the person standing right in front of the display and the person standing on the periphery or on the side of the display will see the exact same picture, the exact same color, brightness, and so forth. And that's one of the advantage of the IPS technology or in-plane switching is that you have this amazing angle of view compared to other display technologies. And because both of these are color accurate displays, we now have a talk about the color gamut. Both of these share some color gamuts, and I'm going to list those first, is that they are both capable of showing 100% sRGB and 99% Adobe RGB. With the PV270 having a few more color on the spec sheet. So for instance, Rec 709, this display can show 100% and also 96% DCI-P3. Something to note though is that the SW, I'm fairly sure that it can also show 100% Rec 709 because Rec 709 is actually much smaller and it fits within Adobe RGB color gamut. The other thing too is that I'm fairly sure that this display can also go up to 96% DCI-P3 color space. Something to think about though is that when BenQ released this first SW, they really target this display towards photography and the two color modes that are important for photography in this case is sRGB and Adobe RGB. So hence why BenQ didn't really list all the other color spaces. And if you really think back to 2015, these IP3 color space wasn't even a word in the vocabulary just yet. It was starting to just come around. So that's just a few things to keep in mind there. Both of these display lack HDR support. So if you are looking for HDR support or HDR content playback capability, what you have to do is look at the SW line and some of the more recent release models. So far in this comparison, what we have seen is specification looks very similar between these two panels, but here is where they differ. Uniformity. The PV270 has BenQ uniformity technology, so when you run a uniformity test across this entire panel, the uniformity of this panel compared to the SU2700PT, it's going to be much better. And amazingly enough, this uniformity technology precedes the SW line by a few years. If you're looking at the current SW line right now, there are two models that have really great uniformity, and that is the SW270 and the SW321C. So if you're looking for a modern SW display with modern connectivity, that's where you're going to look at those two models that I just mentioned. Speaking of connectivity, let's talk about the way how you hook this, these display up to your computer. 
Both of these displays have ports that are very similar to each other. So they have a DVI port. I mean, we still use DVI port. I'm just kidding. I know some of you still use DVI port. It also has an HDMI version 1.4 a full display port version 1.2 and USB 3.0 uplink cable to which if you use that cable, there is two USB type A 3.0 on the left side of the display and an SD card reader. So when you use a USB uplink cable, it, the display will also act as a hub for your peripherals and also your SD card reader as well. So if you need an extra one, you have one on the side of your display. Something different between these two displays regarding the connectivity is that the PV270 also has a mini display port version 1.2 on the display as well. Next up, let's discuss ergonomic. Because both of these displays are released around the same time frame, they use a very similar stand technology. So in this case, the range of motion from left to right, the height that it can go up and down, and also the tilt are going to be very similar between the two. Something to note though is that if you are going to use a display in a multiple environment, meaning that you're going to move the display around quite often or quite frequent, the SW2700PT and the SW line in general are going to be much better in this case because on all the SW display stand, there is a handle on the very top that you can really lift and go with it. And it makes carrying the SW display much easier than trying to move around the PV line in this case. Both of these displays come with a shading hood right out of the box. The shading hood between these two implementations are a little bit different where, for instance, the PV line, the shading hood has a plastic hook on the back that the shading hood will hook into. On the SW line, there is hooks on the side here that are built into the display and the shading hood will hook up into these hooks. Now, both of these shading hoods implementation, what do I think of them? I think they're okay. I think they're a fundamental stepping stone to the current generation SW shading hood, which is much better because the grooves and everything are built in on the side of the display and it just makes the fit and finish of everything much better. But again, they both come in a shading hood out of the box. Something to note though is that they only will come with the horizontal shading hood. So you cannot do a vertical shading hood on these displays. And I don't even think that BenQ makes part for the vertical shading hood for both of these models. So something to keep in mind if you're looking at these two models and you want to use your display in a portrait or vertical orientation. A few more things about the ergonomics is that all of BenQ SW line beside the SW240 comes with a hotkey puck. This is a round thing like this that you can use to quickly change and switch between different color modes. In fact, the newer one come with a much longer cable so you can sit back at your chair and then really do all the adjustment on the display without having to reach out to the display where on the PV270 there is no hotkey puck so you still have to reach out to the display. Speaking of the buttons on the display though and reaching out to that, what I really like about the PV270 is that the hot key or the buttons on the display in this case are touch capacitive and they light up when you touch them and then when you close them out, they just, you know, close down just like that. It's really a nice modern implementation and I, for some reason, I'm really just drawn to that. Versus on the SW displays, they're just all physical buttons and this is including the SW2700PT and all the other SW displays are out there as well. Another thing to note is the branding on the display. And this is something that we may not think about much, but as BenQ makes more and introduce newer generation SW display, you will notice that the BenQ logo or branding on the front of the display is getting much more subdued. So for instance, this one, the BenQ logo is still a really nice shiny silver-like color. On the new one is really, really dark gray, where on the PV line, however, it's actually an embossed shiny BenQ logo here that you can really feel. So it's just something different. On the PV line too, you will notice that there is a cover here and there's also a light sensor there. So essentially the PV line also have a light sensor built in, but the only way to activate the light sensor function is to use a window PC in this case in order for it to measure and constantly adjust the environment. And that is something that I highly recommend against doing because it will change the way how your display luminance is looking, the way how your color are looking on the display. And on a hardware calibrated display, you should avoid doing that in general. Now that we're in our home stretch here, there are a few more things we have to talk about and the, one of them is software. So for the SW lineup, BenQ have developed their own software called Palette Master Element to calibrate the display. The advantage of Palette Master Element in this case is device compatibility. That means that you can use both X-Rite and also Spider devices to run a true hardware calibration on your BenQ SW display. Now let's move on to the PV display. 
The PV lineup, BenQ works specifically with x to develop a software called Palette Master. So again, we have Palette Master Element for the SW line, and for the PV line, we have just Palette Master. So with Palette Master, again, like I mentioned, the software is developed by x so that means that only x will work with this specific software to do a hardware calibration on the PV display. And that's just something to think about. One thing that I mentioned earlier in the video too is that the lookup table on this display is open up to third-party software developer. That means that you can use another program other than Palette Master to do a true hardware calibration on this display. So those are the differences between the two to really consider. By the way, one thing that I want to mention briefly here is that if you have the SW321C, the lookup table on that display is also open up to third-party software developer as well. So you do not have to use Palette Master Element to calibrate the SW321C, but that's really beyond the scope of this video. Let's get back to here. So like I said, the device compatibility being one of the main things that you want to consider in this case too, that if you have a spider, the PV will not work with the spider devices and it will only work with x rite devices. Speaking of software, Palette Master Element and Palette Master, let's talk about the advantages between the two and some of the disadvantages from my personal experience using them. Let's talk about the Palette Master element first. Device compatibility, that's going to be king there. That means many devices are supported. The other thing too is that Palette Master element is a easy enough to use software that when it functions properly, it's able to do a true hardware calibration on the SUV display rather quickly. I mean, how fast the current version of Palette Master element is, it's really astonishing what BenQ have done. So. I don't think we give BenQ enough credit for what they have done right with Palette Master Element. I think that many times we tend to really think about all the bugs that are in Palette Master Element and they're constantly working to fix these bugs. So with every release, BenQ is working towards a better software development and you know with less bugs and making sure that everything works properly. So I want to give BenQ credit on that. Now let's move over to Palette Master. If you have used i1 Profiler before, Palette Master is almost like a copy of i1 Profiler, meaning that you have way more advanced control in Palette Master compared to Palette Master Element. So you can go in and set custom contrast. It will actually give you contrast ratio readout. It will do a lot more in terms of just, you know, calibrating display and fine tuning the adjustment more than the SW line display with Palette Master Element. Now, is there any downside to Palette Master? Well, yes, absolutely. One of them being that, again, spider devices are not compatible here. That's number one. And secondly, is that it takes so long to calibrate this display. So if you think it takes a long time to properly calibrate an SW display using Palette Master Element, on a Palette Master software, it takes about three to four times as long to calibrate this display. So that's just something that I, you know, like I said, it's some, is one of the things that I want to give credit to BenQ, how fast they were able to get Palette Master Element to work to do a true hardware calibration. So I just want to mention that point in this comparison between the two set of softwares. Both of these display does come with their own individual calibration report on the SUV 2700PT. I don't know where I placed mine. And on the PV270, this is a refurbished unit that I've got. So it doesn't come with a report if you get a refurbished unit. So that's something to keep in mind. But they both come pre-calibrated from the factory and they have all the color modes that you're used to in the other BenQ SAV display if you have watched my other videos before. A few last things that I want to mention here is that both of these display are Technicolor certified. They're Pantone validated and Calman verified as well. So that means that BenQ have actually tested with all the major color certification bodies and these display pass for all these bodies with flying colors. Another thing that I want to mention here is that the PV270 has a feature called Gamut Dual that you can use it to view picture by picture or picture in picture in this case. The difference between this Gamut Dual on the PV line is that you have to use two input sources. There's no way to do it from one input source where on the SUV2700PT, because this one is BenQ very first model, it doesn't even have Gamma Dual. Gamma Dual comes in the later BenQ SUV display that was released after this one. So if you need Gamma Dual feature and you're comparing these two display, the PV270 may be a better one, although the way how they implement a Gamma Dual in this one is much different than the current implementation within the PD line or the SW line that's available today. Lastly, one more thing that I want to mention here has to do with the PV line, and this is a video specific feature. What happened is the PV line 
This specific model, the PV270, also has a refresh rate of 72 hertz. So essentially what happened is if you're editing a video in like 24 frame per second and so forth, if you set this display refresh rate to 72 hertz, what you're going to get is a natural cadence that happens with the 24 frame per second. So there's not going to be no pull down in that case. This is something that is available with this display and it's not available in the SW line. The only one, again, that's a little bit different in the SW line is the SW321C and that also has different frame rate that you can choose to match with your video frame rates as well. So that's just something to really think about there. So this has been a comparison between the SW2700PT and the PV270. Depending on your workflow, one of these displays will probably end up fitting into your workflow better or if you're looking for a specific feature, for instance, such as uniformity, in this case, the PV line is going to be much better than the SW2700PT. So those are a few things to keep in mind that we have gone over in this video. If you have any questions about any of the features I have gone over, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe to my channel if you are new, hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload cool new videos like this. And until next time, I just write.